How's it going, Brent? Hey, Brent, in the house. No, he's not. Oh, here. Brent, you, you said you were going to show up for the bleachers, so I, so I invited you to say hi. Did you? But you're not. No, oh. I didn't actually. How's it going, Bryce? Good, Paul. How are you doing? Oh, pretty good, buddy. Pretty good. Pretty good. Just uh, did yesterday's workout with you yesterday. Like, just today. Uh, yeah, we did today. yesterday today. We did yesterday today. Back and, to uh, we're back to the future. future. Yeah, it was so, a good one. We did yesterday, and uh, we are now today. Still sweating. Still sweating profusely. It's hot today. It's super hot very, today. Very humid. Uncomfortably so. And uh, yeah, handstands, wall balls, rowing, intense mix. Solid workout. Good workout. I like it. Ooh. So uh, we changed up our whole mic setup <clears throat> and everything yeah. just Part because of you, Brian. That's why I'm starting you out. So we're starting right. all over. We have different mics stuff lately. The board. We got different chords. We got. Everything. If our sound quality sucks, it's. Still our fault. Yeah. But we tried. That's like we really tried. We do nothing but try. And I have a whole another approach we're gonna try next week, but I didn't quite get to finish it yet. Unless this one works. Unless this one works. In which case we might still try next week's approach. We'll see. We'll yeah. see. Yeah. Anyway, we haven't talked about one of the most important, if not the most important factor of all of fitness for gymnastics. So I thought we would bust out the tall guy exercises. Yeah. So we're gonna talk about Box step ups, <laughs> rolling, no, we're not. wall balls. We are not. That's a lot. What? We don't want. To. We just did those and you lost. That's true. Yeah. Stupid hand step push ups. Mm, not, not a tall, tall guy, guy friends. Nope. Not so, the most important thing, other than getting my box in a good position, yeah, let's go here. is um, stopping those aliens from talking in the background. They're no, wider they're than static. Them, yeah. So maybe that's better. We're gonna talk about nutrition. Okay. We've talked about this before. So this isn't anything new, but I thought I'd take a slightly different approach, a little bit more scientific approach to what we talked about. Oh, wow, okay. So science. In simple, calories in versus calories out. So quantity. If you burn a thousand calories a day and you eat a thousand calories a day, you're gonna stay the same. Odds are. But more or less. Most, yeah, most. Of it. it's, a, if, it's an okay plan. If you're going to <clears throat> eat a thousand calories, if you're going to burn a thousand calories a day, and you're going to eat two thousand calories a day, you will gain weight. You're going to gain something. Not yeah. necessarily fat, not necessarily muscle, some yeah. combination. You will gain. Right. If you go the other route with that, and you eat a thousand calories a day, or you burn a thousand calories a day, and let's say you only eat five hundred, you're going to lose. Again, Possibly. You're, yeah. Well, you will. If you're if you're deficient, you're going to lose. You might not necessarily lose fat, you might not necessarily, like, you might, what you're losing may change, but sure. To some extent, calories in versus calories out is a very good start. Absolutely. Should be the basis. That being said, a protein, one gram of protein is four calories. Yep. One gram of carb, four calories. One gram of fat, nine calories. One gram of alcohol, seven calories. Whoa, whoa. There's alcohol? So that there's, counts there's, as its own macro There's, there's, there's calories and alcohol? No wonder I can't lose weight. <laughs> so, those facts, facts. Yeah, sorry, yeah, that's 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 right. um, so those are all facts. That it takes a certain amount of energy to destroy the food. That's more or less how they come up with those calories. Yeah, put it in light, a box. They light it on it fire. Yeah. And that tells you how much energy. Right. That being said, that's not that is why. But the point of this podcast yes. is that nutrition is science and not math. Okay, yes, absolutely. So it's not just straight calories in, calories out, although that's a great starting point. Yeah, do Because to. there's a lot of other factors. Hormones. So before we even get into those, I want to get into the next section. All right. So in my personal opinion, I think you should be eating between 0.75 and a gram of protein for every pound. Of actual body weight? Of desired body weight. Ah, okay. So let's say I want to weigh 240 Gee, pounds. Paul, that just happens to be the, the formula I use. Not a coincidence. It's okay. a fairly common yeah. common mentality for performance. Yeah. So let's say I want to weigh 240 pounds. Good right. news, I do. Well, you, you have to say... So I need to have 240 yeah. grams yeah. of protein a day. And how would you come to that 240 pounds? Crossfit. You're like, no, no, no. How, how did you come to 240 pounds being the weight you wanted to weigh? Um, You're like, I weigh 250 now and I need to lose 10 pounds. Yes. 
So I would suggest we set a parameter of body fat percentage. Ideal for you, you know, you, yes. you figure out what, what you're at, what you should be at, and then you do the math of lean body mass and then add on to your fat, how much fat mass you would have, and that would be a better way than saying I'd like to lose 10 pounds. Okay, I agree with More that. specific goal, that's all, good. Okay. So we're, we're still getting, but yeah. we're not going the direction I want to go with it, but you're right, I agree with you there too. Okay. So, balance, so if we're gonna eat one gram of protein for every pound, yeah. So that means you're gonna have four carbs or four calories for every pound. Yeah. Then the rest of those calories need to be made up of some combination of fats and carbs. Right. Depending on how you are, how you want to eat, it doesn't really matter if you have fats or carbs, although it does significantly. Yeah. So if I'm gonna make up the rest of those calories with um, popsicles, I'm gonna be loading up the glucose and yeah, I'm gonna crap huge out spikes and, and huge yeah. crashes. And in the end, if I could actually sustain off of that, I might be fine. But it's a really bad approach to go. Yeah, you'd have to, you'd have to be burning fast. <laughs> you could also go the full keto approach and do it almost exclusively with fats. Yeah, and your body will adapt. And your body will adapt to it. But in the end, your fats have to convert to sugar. Sugar. Anywhere in order for you to burn them. Correct. Just like your- Or or your excess protein, if there's excess protein in them. Yes, so your protein would also do the same thing. Although protein essentially needs carbs to digest, or it ends up breaking down your aminos sure. to be able to turn those into carbs right. to be able to digest sure. them. Yeah. So, BMR times your, um, Activity factor multiplied by your activity factor mm -hmm. is going to give you your calorie burn per day. Yep. So, for men, this is where I get scientific with it. Okay. For men, if we take 88.362, yep. add that to 13.397 um, times your weight this, kilograms. Write this down. Yeah, write this down. Plus 4.799 times your height in centimeters. Minus. This is America. 5.677 times your age in years. Yep. If you follow that formula, which I have to have done. Yes, what did you come up with? Um, that's gonna give you your BMR. Right. And then for basic, girls, it's different numbers. Basal metabolic rate. Yes. Your daily burn. That's right. Of doing nothing. Except, of well, doing uh, work. You're doing work. Whatever your normal day is. That would be at, with full rest. Right. And then you multiply that by a factor depending on how much work you do. Oh, okay, you're actually. So right. then you add that to your that, and that's gonna get your total daily expenditure, energy expenditure. So. What if for, I work out? So if for a girl, it would be numbers are yeah. 447.593 plus 9.247 times their weight in kilogram plus 3.098 times height in centimeters. Did you read a minus men's health article? Is that what <laughs> 4.330 <laughs> times their age of years. No, men's health.com. And why is it all in that Because I'm sure Europeans figured the chef out. They're oh, smarter. okay, yeah, just, yeah. Okay, so I just said all the girls' numbers too, so if somebody's actually listening to this and wants to try it, they could like keep listening to it over and over until they got all those numbers, oh, and then God. eventually they could try it. How about you put it in the show notes? Or you can Google it. Yeah, show notes. Show notes. <laughs> good try. Good try. You know like show, show notes? I could. Oh, come on. Man. I could put the show notes. I suppose. I'll put them. I'll put them in on the YouTube. All right. If you send that to me, I might. Okay. So anyway, so I take all those information and I put it in for myself. Right. Um, and being 6'3", 240 pounds, uh, 35 years old, I did all those numbers and it works out that my burn is 3,900 calories per day. Okay. Which sounds like an awful lot. But when I was doing my whoop strap, which right. I did for like four months straight, right. I ranged anywhere from 37 to 42 every day. Yeah. And on a high day, I got as high as five something, yeah. over 5,000. And on a really low day, I'd get down to like 35. So I would say that that calculation is pretty accurate. Mm -hmm. Then you take that number and you multiply it by your sedimentary value for 1.2 or your light activity value of 1.375 or your moderate activity of right. how much you work out. Very active, 1.725, extremely active, 1.9. And that's what gets you to that number. So, right. Sorry, that was, so my BMR was actually 2261.18 and then I times that by 
the very active because I work out five to six times a week. Okay. And so according to Google, that's what I should be doing. Sure. Like I said, that brought me up to the 39, and 39's pretty much midpoint of what I actually saw when I was wearing a yeah. every day. Yeah, that's good. And that's, uh, somebody asked me about Whoop, and I said, well, you could listen to our podcast about Whoop scraps. Yeah. But uh, they're good at first to find out actually what your, your See, calorie burn is. If it's right. My calorie burn was way through the roof, but it's because I'm doing a uh, very active job. Yeah, so, you're, you're considered extreme active for sure. Yeah. So that definitely changed. Yeah, so then that changed like, when COVID started. All of a sudden, you were down to sedimentary. Right, and that's where I got fat, sedentary. I'm not, I am not a rock. But <laughs> 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 I know my muscles are tough and rock like. I'm not set set up set up my set Okay. So that all being said, um, yeah. that also doesn't really say whether someone's gonna be lean or what have you. Because there's three different body types. Sure. So some people are ectomorphs. Yeah. So for those people, it's characterized by long, thin muscles and limbs. They are usually slim with low body fat storage. They tend to be higher metabolism, good carb tolerance, and a high sympathetic nervous system activity. So that would be someone like, I think you would fit that description. No, I'd be in between the next one. Yeah. Uh, I'd say you're in between that one and the next one. Yeah, I agree. Yeah. So the next one would be the mesomorphs. Right. And those are people that have large bones, solid torso, but slim waist, wide shoulders, usually have controlled body fat percentage, therefore demonstrate med or moderate carbohydrate tolerance and moderate high syst systematic sy sympathetic nervous system activity. Me the mesomorphs are naturally muscular and athletic. And I actually think that yeah. you have to work your ass off during your muscle. Yeah, absolutely. And that's why I think you're more ectomorph than yeah, mesomorph. Slightly, slightly towards the ecto, yeah. Because someone like uh, Jason Kalipa like, looks at the gym and he starts to get strong. Oh, he's the next one up. Well, then the, uh, maybe no, I don't he's, think so. He's in between the next two. Though. And then the endomorphs, which is endomorphs. where I would say I definitely sit, right. is endomorphs have wider waist, larger bones, increased body fat storage. They're naturally broad and thick and have slower metabolism. In general, they do not tolerate carbs well, meaning they gain weight easily from them. They yeah. usually have low sympathetic nervous system activity. Sure. So, I think I'm definitely on that end of it, where yep. in order to be lean, I have to work my ass off. Of sure. Now, that being said, I get strong pretty easy, yep. but not nearly as easy as someone like a Jason Kluge, right. who I would say is more of a mesomorph yeah, tuning stuff, like significantly so. Yeah. And I think someone like yourself, you have a really easy time staying lean. Mm -hmm. Not that you don't still have to work at it. Yeah. Like, you could be fat Obviously, too. Obviously, if I stop doing stuff, I'd get fat. But it's a lot easier for you to stay lean yeah. than other people. But that all being said, my final note of this conversation essentially, is just because you lean towards a certain way doesn't put you in that category or it doesn't force you to have that body type. Sure, I don't know. So like, I think a good example would be Tommy, yeah. who should be a super tiny, frail little girl. Right. No matter what she eats. Right, she's definitely that girl. But she's not a frail tiny little girl because she busts her ass to right. be strong. So she's like actively working on that. And when it comes to nutrition, the people who are actively working one way or another, like I don't have a full six pack at the moment, but I have had. Right. So I can be yeah, super you just have to lean. dial it in and stick with it. But I got dial it in more so than someone in your position. Yeah, but then well, you, you have to get big and strong, you have to dial that right. in more so. So everybody has their perks. Like just like it says, you, you, you have to get away from carbs in order to get there. I have to add carbs in order to get there. So and to go towards each other. And then if you're the lucky guy in the middle, you just eat whatever the you fuck you want, want, you're jacked. That's right. Yeah. Absolutely. But unfortunately, there's not many people in that position. There's some. Yeah. Yeah. And like those guys who are like celebrities that always look perfect or athletes that always look perfect, yeah. either A, they work their ass off and you right. can't tell, you just right. don't know that they do. Or they are genetically lucky like that. And they're, there's definitely their people that are like that. is gen genetically helping them. <laughs> and that's another significant factor is that it's nobody's give me, getting this. Give me five million dollars and I'll, for a movie, I'll I'll get jacked tomorrow. So that's I think another big factor is I think a lot of people are working harder than you think 
they are. Oh, yeah, absolutely. So like the people oh, like hard work. someone like a Jason Momboa, he yeah. got super jacked for Aquaman. Yeah. And then like a few months later, people were making fun of his dad bod, <laughs> which like honestly he was at his fattest was like me at my leanest. Right. So, I mean like come and on, that's probably him just bad. cut down his. Uh, it's easy to cut down your workout schedule. Yeah. It's a lot harder to adjust your diet to fit, fit that cut down, right? So that's what that's what happened to me, right? COVID. Yeah. I gained six, seven pounds sitting in a month. Yeah, because and you stopped working out, but you kept eating. This yeah, and more, more now I'm trying to cut that down. It's yeah. not that fun. I can't run, by the way. No? Yeah. That's how we didn't do today's workout. That's so right. running and toast yeah. bar, you were like, no, no and I'm I do a bar, so I don't even know what that is. Yeah. I do knee, knee raises. You gotta get around the belly and go up to the bar. Tell me about it. So, I just thought I would take a different approach to nutrition than sure. we have. So it's, nothing that we've said there is really new to other right. nutrition podcasts, but it's a different way to think about it maybe. Absolutely, like, you wanna know what you're, where you actually stand and what you are. And everybody should be eating roughly the same amount of protein based on their yeah. desired weight. Yep. So not that everybody should be in the same quantity, but they're right. same proportion. To me, the biggest the biggest things that people make mistakes with all these calculators, A, is all these things were created with kilos in mind. Yeah. One, uh, you know, whatever, 0.75 to 2 grams per kilo of body weight, lean body weight. Yeah. Okay? Then, because, you know, America, you know, well, yeah, the rest of the world still uses yeah. kilos, but yeah, America. they forgot to adjust the kilo to pound. So people are taking two grams of protein per body weight, not lean. Yeah, there's people out there eating 300 grams of protein, saying, "Oh, I'm supposed to be doing that at 165 pounds." Yeah, no, you're, you're wasting not. your money. This, well, and this mostly you're just, just going to get turned into sugar. That's right. Yeah, so it's just you're eating more carbs. Really. When I make people's macros. Um, I'm more towards the your ideal body weight, which is based off of my numbers of what you know the ideal range of a female and a male active male female male and what your actual lean body mass is, and doing exactly what you're saying with it. And then when we're talking about lean body mass, that's actually something else to point out. Yeah, most people shouldn't be sitting sub 10 percent body fat. No. That's not a very little. No, women point. should be around 15 to 18, maybe even 20. Yeah, and say guys, 18 from, to 20 is what I was from thinking. 12 to 15. Probably. Yeah, that's what I was going to say as well. Yeah. 12 to 15 for guys is like yeah. ideal. And again, some guys are going to sit a little higher well, it's than be that. It's easier or harder for people to stay there. But if you're talking your ideal body weight and what you want to be at, I mean, that's. Yeah. Don't, ex don't do your numbers by accepting. Eh. I'm at 30% now, I'd, I'd be happy with 22%. How about we just go down to 20 or 19, do your numbers off that, and maybe eventually you get there, you know? Yeah. Instead of just kind of, don't, don't settle the on the numbers. You know, you're not gonna be full, you're not gonna be hungry, you know what I mean? Yeah. So just work towards those actual numbers. And then, when it comes to the actual eating portion of this, yeah. it's easy to eat enough on those calories, that's a ton of oh, calories. Yeah, yeah, if yeah. anything, it's the opposite problem of having to eat too much on those calories, yeah. if you're eating clean. Yeah. You can go to McDonald's and pound 3,000 well, calories the, in a serving. The big thing with one of those calculators is the what you're trying to do. If you're trying to maintain, lean, or gain, right? Yeah. And most people that want to lose are like, I want to lose it all now. Yes. Instead of, so instead of taking the prescribed 10% uh, reduction or so. Yeah. They're like, I'm cutting 30% because I want to lose five pounds this week, 10 pounds next they week. They go on the biggest loser strategy. Yeah, and so then that just sets them up for failure. Whereas if I cut you down 10%, in six months, you're gonna lose as much as you wanted to lose in one month. But it'll be However, maintainable and it's you gain muscle back, along the way. And you weren't a hungry ass bitch the whole time. Yeah. Yeah, no, that's very so true. That's a big one on those calculators. Don't get greedy. Yeah, and except if you're losing a pound a week, a half a pound a week, that's progress so, in the right direction. Yeah. Like you should be going yeah. down all the time. Or the same for the other side of it. If you're trying to gain weight because you want to be bigger and stronger, that takes time. You're not gonna gain five pounds of muscle. Like when we used to do the transform challenge, 
people had gained 11 pounds of muscle in 30 days. Yeah. No, no. I'm sorry. Fudge Yoni, numbers. that's not true. Fudge we did not gain 11 pounds of muscle. Anybody who gained 11 pounds of muscle is on steroids. Yeah. Maybe that was the trick. Yeah. On that note. I wonder if it had a point. We're out. Later. That steroid does seem like the good idea, though. <laughs>